Hi, I'm Susan. Welcome back to Cancer Research Demystified. And today's episode, we're going to talk about something that we haven't really broached yet on this channel, which is that cancer research itself can actually be a little bit wasteful and we could probably all do a little bit better on making our work more sustainable. So this year in UCL, I've been joined by a fantastic project student named Katerina, who I'm delighted to welcome to our channel today to tell you a bit more about sustainability in cancer research. And so without further ado, I'm going to go straight to her. Hello, I'm Katarina. I'm a fourth year student at UCL. I'm from Slovakia and currently I'm interested in looking at sustainability in cancer research. It might surprise cancer patients that cancer research is actually quite wasteful. So one of the examples is we keep our cancer cells in flasks like these and they're all plastic. They used to be glass and then we switched to plastic because it's simpler because they're clean and you can use them once, throw them away and get another one. We use a lot of these because we need to regrow our cancer cells in a new flask two to three times a week. You can imagine this a little bit like a house plant. Once it outgrows its pot, you need to replant it into a new, potentially bigger pot. That's what we do with our cancer cells. So we would take them from one of the flasks and put it into a new one. After one use, this flask goes into the bin and then it's done. It's very wasteful because we do this quite often. If you would look into an incubator, there's a lot of these flasks. So every scientist, every cancer researcher will probably go through easily a bag or two of these a week. The good part though is that these bags, for example, now are recyclable. So that's a good step for sustainability and I hope that more and more packaging and material that we could recycle will be recyclable. However, it doesn't end with the flasks. We have other materials that we use that also need to be binned after one use. And these, for example, are these stripettes, which we use to move our cells around or add liquids and fluids that our cells need to grow. The packaging, thankfully, is also recyclable. However, the actual stripette itself is not and will also have to go to waste. So one of the options how we could potentially decrease the waste we produce in cancer research would obviously be we use the flask, we then clean it and sterilize it, and then we reuse the same flask again, which would mean we don't have to throw it away. Um, that may be a little bit difficult because we are dealing with plastics and the sterilization process is high temperatures, so we don't really know how it would affect our materials and we don't know what that would do to our cancer cells. So maybe another step would be to just try and reuse the flask. Maybe that would be sufficient. So that is actually something I have been working on in trying to reuse these flasks without having to put them through the really high temperatures and seeing how it affects my cells in terms of do they die? Do they grow better? Are any of them left at all? Or do they just all leave when I remove the fluids? It's something I need to look at and I'm very curious to see. Um, a tentative result for now is that I would say one of these flasks can definitely be at least used twice without any difference in what the cells look like and how they behave, which if you think about it could have the plastic waste we create in our labs just for cancer research, which would obviously be great. To actually monitor how much waste we produce in cancer research, in our lab specifically, I've been coming in every day and I've just been looking at the amount of waste we create. So there will be recycling waste such as packaging and boxes and cardboard. Then there's general waste that used to be polystyrene, which is also from the packaging. And then there's obviously the part that we produce actually from our research with our materials, such as these flasks and these strippettes and the gloves we use, also the tissues we use and that is biohazardous waste. And what I do every day is come in, roughly weigh them, kind of, I keep just like a counter and I tick them off every day with like, okay, today I found three bins that were biohazardous, one recycling, and then I tally it up at the end of the week and we can kind of monitor the amount of waste we produce that way. Um, I started the calculations and some weeks, the days where I found nothing, I got really excited because it made me really happy that we didn't produce any waste. 
But there are days where I come and I find four bags that need to be burned that are all four to six kilograms of plastic. And that is a pity because we do need to progress in cancer research and we need to do the research thoroughly. So we obviously do not want to sacrifice research in terms of making it more sustainable, but it is quite terrifying to see that maybe 15 to 30 people in the lab can produce that much waste in one day only. I would like to continue in the research of making cancer research as sustainable as possible, and for this I need to get my qualifications for university. So to complete my integrated master's degree at UCL, I'm currently doing this project, um, which I'll need to write a thesis on in terms of what I did and what I found which has been a very good time for me as well because I get to do the practice in the lab, I get to see how wasteful it is, I can kind of maybe try and think about what the options are, where we could work in for the future, I can see the bigger picture in terms of not only the materials such as these that we use, but I can see all the special equipment that we require, plus the more usual things such as water and the fridges we keep, the computers we have, but then the specialized things such as autoclaves, incubators, or the biosafety hoods in which we do work every day. Mm -hmm.